like hypnotism like people don't really get hypnotized they just believe that they can be hypnotized so it's like look deeply into my eyes and now you are a chicken you'll be like well now's the point i'm supposed to be a chicken so i guess i'll be a chicken because i believe he can hypnotize me i really don't think i could be hypnotized <laughs> Woo! <laughs> i am invincible invincible you oh! Today's video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Supplement your health and nutrition with their unique blend of vitamins and minerals. More on them in just a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Brain Blaze. Today, another one from our segment, The Past Was the Worst, where we look at why the past was the worst and you're living in the best time that there ever has been. It really is. We've looked at so many things where it's just like, oh my God, just be grateful that you live today. Literally more than any other time in history. And the further back you go, the worse it gets. Today is Disco Fever, the mysterious medieval dancing plagues. If you're new here, what happens? Danny has written me this script. I am going to read it and uh, add some stupid comments and all that kind of stuff. Sam afterwards. Oh, Say my name. Sometimes I forget to mention God King Sam, who adds the memes. Let's go. Bow before my greatness. Be in awe as you are in the presence of the Almighty. Enough. MC Monster Mash has just returned home after an all-night acid house party rave held at an abandoned warehouse in Coventry where they finally kicked out the last punter. MC Monster Mash has had a proper banging night. The poppin' candy was flowing and he was mad for it. I don't know what poppin' candy is, but I assume it's maybe ecstasy. <laughs> he feels thrilled to be a part of a thriving scene in 1989 in which hardcore ravers like himself can stay up dancing all through the night without having to tell their parents what time they're going to be home for supper. And as and he feels sympathy for people unfortunate enough to be born in the olden days when they had to make do with lame discotheques that closed at midnight after all the prawn cocktail crisps had run out. <laughs> Yeah. Also, prawn cocktail crisps are horrible. I don't like them. 1989 is such an amazing time to be alive and buzzing. However, what MC Monster Mash, his real name, Timothy Trout. <laughs> MC Timothy Trout! It's, uh, it's a lot, you know, it doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? What he doesn't know is that he's a big wuss for bailing out after just one night. Back in medieval Europe, the real hardcore ravers used to keep on dancing for weeks and even months until their feet started bleeding and they eventually dropped dead from exhaustion. Oh, I've made a video about this before. It's called The Dancing Plague. I remember it quite well. I feel like maybe I've done it twice. <laughs> You know there are some topics that I just come back to and it's like because i host a bunch of different channels and then it's like oh wait, this topic huh oh i've done this before <laughs> it's like okay and now i'm doing it for a third time the only problem was but please please keep watching don't leave peter my plant will miss you the only problem was that they had been gripped by a disco fever that they couldn't actually control so what exactly was causing one of the weirdest epidemics in history in which hundreds of victims literally danced themselves to death coke not cocaine it wasn't cocaine but it could be no flower the disco fever had many names some call it the dancing plague including simon's previous videos on the subject <laughs> some call it choreomania some call it st john's dance some call it st vetus's dance some called it the mashed potato actually not many people called it the mashed potato but whatever you choose to call it that was a weird joke danny <laughs> this dancing mania that's another one by the way surfaced predominantly between the 14th and 16th centuries and appeared to possess these hopeless souls who could only concede defeat in the sweltering heat to the beat of the street god damn it danny why do you do this to me but also nailed it that is one kind of artist it reminds me a bit of former uk prime minister Theresa may i know exactly where danny is going with this and i'll let him tell the story during a brexit business trip to south africa in 2018 the servant prime minister visited a school in cape town and spontaneously broke out into a dance routine as she was welcomed by traditional south african music i mean oh boy there are just no words are there Woo! Sam will hopefully be showing the not remotely awkward footage right now. I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like just one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, politicians, you're so cringe. And I, I'm cringe. I know what it is like to be cringe. And never shall I be that cringe. 
you never go full cringe. I'm sure you'll agree that it's blatantly clear that Theresa May just happens to have disco fever running through her soul, and she can't help but surrender to the funk. She may share something with a young woman called Frau Trafia, who lived in Strasbourg, now a part of modern-day France, but back then a free city within the Holy Roman Empire. The year was 1518, which was admittedly a few decades after the medieval period, but this appeared to be the last hurrah for a broadly medieval epidemic which had been baffling mainland Europe for a few hundred years. Frau Trafia stepped out of her home that day and started showing off her killer moves to a gathering crowd. It might have seemed less weird if she'd actually been dancing to audible music but the volume appeared to be turned right down turn up every tear from the house oh shit my lord go ahead Frau was just dancing in her own little world without the slightest hint of self-consciousness <laughs> in the modern day you'd be like we should get Frau to a psychiatrist or something she just doesn't seem of right mind in the past, you'd be like, she's a witch! Burn the witch now! Or something like that. And she didn't stop. Six days later, she was still strutting her stuff to an increasingly bewildered and concerned audience. Her shoes became soaked in blood. Frau would occasionally even collapse from exhaustion. But a little while later, she'd be right back on her feet again to trip the light fantastic now just before we get back into today's video i do want to thank athletic greens for sponsoring it ag1 by athletic greens is a comprehensive all-in-one green powder engineered to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet and support your body's nutritional needs across four pillars of health gut health immune support energy and recovery look i am not a fitness youtuber you're not coming here for tips on squats whatever squats might be and i also know i don't necessarily have the healthiest diet in the world i know that maybe i'm not getting all of the vitamins and minerals that i need but the good news is that with athletic greens there are 75 vitamins and minerals listed here on the back and these fill any holes in my diet which is good because there are holes that need filling <laughs> you'd be hard pressed to find a more comprehensive powder or supplement on the market what i do is you fill this is the uh, the shaker that comes with it and uh, i fill this up with water put a little scoop in there every morning shake it up i generally have it with my coffee it tastes great and i feel it just kind of sustains my energy a little bit uh, super good for you so you also feel good about drinking it which is nice plus ag1 is gluten-free dairy-free paleo vegan keto low allergen low calorie it's less than one gram of sugar per serving but it tastes sweet it tastes good so ag1 is the perfect dietary regimen and if this sounds like a supplement you've been looking for you can grab your own immunity bundle which gives you a year's supply of vitamin d which comes in this little dropper here you just take a little drop every day i kind of put it on my tongue and then i drink the drink and it also comes with five individual travel packs so you can uh, be good to go while you travel so these are very convenient all you need to do is go to athleticgreens.com forward slash blaze you get this and the travel packs for free with your first order there's also a link below and now back to today's video and now this thing was getting a bit contagious within the first week around 30 people had also given themselves to the totally silence group and by the end of the month around 400 people were dancing with delirium under the baking hot conditions barely stopping to eat or drink or sleep they just kept on going until their bodies gave up it had been a while since the last reported outbreak of dancing plague and now the citizens of strasbourg were concerned that the whole city was at risk of becoming engulfed by toe tapping madness we should stop to point out that this isn't just a silly internet hoax or an urban legend oh no this actually happened while certain cases are more comprehensively chronicled than others the 1518 epidemic in particular is backed up with reliable independent reports physician notes cathedral sermons and even municipal orders and we can see from these jittery municipal orders that the city councillors were keen to nip this thing in the bud before too many victims perished from exhaustion or strokes or heart attacks it's not entirely clear how many dancers died in this strasbourg epidemic although one often quoted chronicle reported that the fever was claiming up to 15 lives per day over a period of a couple of months 
However, there aren't really any compelling corroborative sources. Hi, I'm Renata Bliss, and I'm your freestyle dance teacher. But relentlessly jiving in the heat without water or rest for weeks on end was bound to get a bit dangerous and claim some casualties along the way. The counselors had this sus though. They figured that all these dancers were simply suffering from overheated blood, which is essentially boiling their poor brains. Ah, yes. <laughs> well, one, what the f are the counselors doing this? Isn't this the role of a doctor? And then I'll also say no, because doctors back in the day were like, how are we going to solve this one? Get some leeches. Uh, maybe we could try some cocaine. <laughs> That'll help. I don't think they had cocaine in 1518, but you know, whatever they cocaine likes things, they had some crazy medicine. Let's get some Eye of Newton there. Why the f not? The remedy? More dancing. And the volume turned right up this time. Don't do it. No. No. The counselors have come to the conclusion that the victims just needed to shake this thing off in full public view. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> The cure for all diseases, especially psychological diseases. You're a bit depressed. Why don't you shake that sh off? You're dancing uncontrollably in the heat for hours or ends. Just shake it off, you weak minded fool. Christ, we were pieces of shit in the past and we're pieces of shit today. So all the dancers were dragged into the city center and shoved into guild halls and open air grain markets and onto makeshift dance stages where they were encouraged to keep on cutting the rug to an even bigger audience. To help the victims even more in the mood, professional pipers and drummers and other musicians were hired to latch on to the silent rhythm. The idea here was that the musicians could get in step with the dancers and then gradually slow down the pattern patterns of the audible music. The delirious dancers would also slowly then wind down with a tapering tune. I get the feeling I remember from my previous video that this, to, I mean, it's not a bad idea, but it didn't work. So, uh, did any of this work? None of it. It was a rubbish idea. It's not a rubbish idea, Danny. I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to be like, leeches and shit? Remember, this was the past. They had no idea what the fuck was going on inside our bodies. Be like, let's play the music and then slow it down and be like, okay. Doesn't sound unreasonable. Be kind of like, oh no, there's a runaway car. And you just get another car, get in front of it, put the brakes on, the car goes into the back, and the car slow down. What sort of f***ing analogy is this, Simon? Bringing the problem out into the open was turning the city into a dance fest caused, and this caused the contagion to spread as more and more curious onlookers succumbed to the fever. It was a bit like trying to close down a small illegal music festival by standing at the gates and handing out free space cake. The councillors, also that analogy, Danny, that's also a stretch. The councillors had got this though. They had now come to the grim conclusion that this wasn't just a case of hot blood. All of these victims had clearly been cursed by a holy wrath. And there we have it, everybody. There had to be witches somewhere, or, you know, ridiculous things that are close to witches. Some suggested that... Some suggest... Witchcraft. Some suggested that the curse had been inflicted by St. John, as several dancers reportedly called out his name while busting a move. But St. Vitus was more commonly believed to be the most likely culprit. <laughs> These f***ing saints. Should have never sainted them in the first place. Sainted? Deified. Deified? St. Vitus is a bit of an odd fish. He apparently likes to punish sinners by compelling them to dance against their will. The patron saint of dances and epileptics, well there you go, is also said to protect the faithful against a few moments later lightning strikes, animal attacks, and oversleeping. Really? I mean, holy sh**. He covers everything. Things I'm worried about. Lightning strikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not bad. Animal attacks. Yeah, f hell. Animals are scary sometimes. Oversleeping. Gotta say, less of a concern. But I also have a two-year-old and a five-month-old child. So, uh, yeah. Oversleeping, not exactly part of my life. Haven't slept for a solid 83 hours, but yeah. I'm good. So, a bit of an all-rounder then. I'd like to think he's got a mate called St. Bobby, who's the patron saint of gangrene and protects the faithful against bee stings, haunted wells, and pyramid schemes. We really need a saint to protect people against. There are so many pyramid schemes. Oh my god, I just saw a great documentary, which I'm sure everyone has seen by this point, because of course they have. It's like the most watched documentary on Netflix. That Tinder swindler is good. It's basically a weird Ponzi scheme. 
It's super cool. I won't spoil any more. Go see it. No, I don't think I will. There was only one course of action which could finally lift this terrible curse. <laughs> Magic. Not really. In a complete contrast to the last strategy, all music and dancing in public was swiftly barred in Strasbourg, even though those already afflicted were unlikely to get the memo. Any dancer who persisted was forced into a pair of red shoes for reasons that may have been lost to the winds of time, and then taken to the nearby town of Severn, where they were dragged around a dirty old grotto with, which contained a wooden effigy dedicated to St. Vitus. Ah, yes. You <laughs> see something in witchcraft, <laughs> Uh, this episode, the thing that I'm li most grateful about is not like being in the past because there was some horrible plague that made people dance, but it was just all the witchy shit and like not having real drugs and understanding of the- We don't even understand the human mind now, but at least we've got some vague idea of how it works. Curiously, this eventually seemed to do the trick. Maybe it was something to do with the red shoes. Maybe St. Vitus really had shown compassion for the cursed seems like that that's exactly right yeah or maybe the victims just grew tired of being dragged around a grotto with a crap effigy and their bloodied feet were really starting to ache whatever the reason the dancing had reached its final frantic step but if it wasn't for saint vitus pulling the puppet strings what was really behind the disco fever is it crack was it something in the water was it a staged performance or an attempt to disguise a banned religious ritual no nah, it's just mass hysteria I feel like this was covered in the previous video, but even at this point, I'll be like, well, it's some weird parasite in their brains or mass hysteria. Uh, it's not, it's not, well, all the other shit they were talking about, like St. Vitus and all of that. Obviously. We're not fucking idiots. Or perhaps, was everybody just on crack? <laughs> exactly. No. Incredibly, the real answer may have more to do with St. Vitus than you might think. Some of the other accounts of the dancing plague aren't quite as dependable. One of the earliest documented incidents apparently occurred in 2000. Whoops, no. <laughs> Obviously not. Misread that. 1021 in the German town of Impronounceable, where an angry priest got so fed up with a rowdy crowd making a disturbance in his graveyard that he cursed them all to dance relentlessly for a whole year. They only stopped dancing the following Christmas when they finally dropped into a deep sleep which many would never wake up from. I mean, if you're from the past and you believe in curses, you could totally believe in this shit, couldn't you? You could totally like, he cursed me, so now I must dance. Like hypnotism. Like people don't really get hypnotized. They just believe that they can be hypnotized. So it's like, look deeply into my eyes and now you are a chicken. You'll be like, well, now's the point I'm supposed to be a chicken. So I guess I'll be a chicken because I believe he can hypnotize me. I really don't think I could be hypnotized. <laughs> Whoa! Ha <laughs> ha! I am invincible! Invincible! You- oh! Oh. I would just be like, they'd be like, think about this. And I'd be like, all I'm thinking about is the extraordinary amount of bullshit that you're trying to spin on me right now, dickhead. That sounds like a dark fairy tale. And speaking of dark fairy tales, another outbreak allegedly occurred in Germany in 1237 when a group of children decided to dance the whole 20 mile journey from Erfurt to Arnstadt to the bafflement of onlookers. This could have just been a group of kids in particularly high spirits, and it may have been the inspiration for the legend of the Pied Piper of Hamlin, which is first believed have popped up in Germany very shortly afterwards. Well, there you go. Wait, wasn't the Pied Piper, was the Pied Piper of Hamley about dancing kids? Wasn't it about a dude who like played a piping thing and then the rats left the city or something like that? I feel like I should know this. This is probably one of those stories that, you know, you hear as a kid and then I'm shortly going to hear like reading, I'll be like reading some fairy tales to my kids or whatever. Surprisingly dark fairy tales by the way and it'll be like oh look the pied piper and then i'll be like oh look now i know this story again as an adult how nice not as nice not as good as the tinder swindler but still good one of the more reliably documented incidents occurred in aachen in what is now germany in 1374 i've been to aachen when up to 1100 victims joined hands and danced and writhed in agony until inevitably collapsing on the floor from the strain of it all <laughs> Hey, he ain't playing no games. What is that? What is that? Wait, it Many of the dozens of reported cases of dance mania occurred in towns and cities that were reasonably close to the River Rhine. It's the magical diseases from the River Rhine, or just regular diseases from the River Rhine. It's the past. It's probably filthy. Have rivers always been filthy? I imagine in the past it's like, oh, people are dumping sewage in the river. It's filthy. And in the present it's like, yeah, factories are dumping in the river. It's filthy. Even in the past they'd be like, we're killing animals in the river and washing in there. It's filthy. Rivers just horrible all the time.
And over the centuries, scholars tried to join the dots by suggesting that there was a problem with the regional food chain. By the 20th century, it was speculated that the victims had fallen foul of food poisoning from eating baked bread from flour that was tainted with ergot, a dodgy fungus that grows on damp rye. Oh yeah, I remember that from the first video. Like, they were like, you're getting some sort of weird disease from that. I, I do think that the most... I wonder if Danny draws the same conclusion as whoever wrote the script for the other channel, where it was like, it was just... Really, it was just psycho psychological. Like, people were having all sorts of stress from the world being a piece of because it was the past. And they're like, ah, what are we going to do? I don't know how to deal with life. So I'm just going to dance. Just, I've lost my mind. And then other people were like, I'm doing it as well. Life is horrible. The toxic and psychoactive chemicals produced from ergot are related to LSD and can induce violent twitching, vivid hallucinations, seizures, convulsions, delusions, and a compulsion to listen to very early Pink Floyd. Or, honestly, Danny, any Pink Floyd. I thought you liked Pink Floyd, Danny. And I seem to be the only one who thinks that Pink Floyd is just pretentious shit. Have I brought this up already? I was trying to get to grips with Pink Floyd. <laughs> and there's another band from the same time period called Fleetwood Mac. And I'm sure this is news to absolutely fuck nobody. But they released album an album. Pink Floyd released Dark Side of the Moon. And Fleetwood Mac released an album called Rumours about i think they were in like a year or two of each other rumors and so i i've listened to dark side of the moon like everybody and i think it's a pretentious piece of shit. um and then i listened to rumors from fleetwood mac both of these by the way are some of the best-selling albums like top 10 best-selling albums of all time ever rumors is a f***ing masterpiece <laughs> and i just don't understand how people think that those are in the same ballpark of goodness because they're not are you done uh are you done? Yeah, can I, are you done? Are you done? Okay, okay. In other words, all these people were just off their tits on acid. However, it seems unlikely that ergot poisoning would incite victims to dance for week on end. Weeks on end, quite the opposite, in fact. Most evenings spent on LSD are more likely to involve sitting down for six hours and arguing about whose turn it is to put the kettle on. I've never done LSD. I don't think I would now. I'm too old and too boring. And I was having a conversation with my wife last night. <laughs> and we were like, don't do it. We're talking about like travel and stuff like this. And basically, when COVID started, I, we had our first kid. And then we had another kid while COVID was still on. So we didn't really travel anywhere. And then kind of two years went by. And I realized it's been two years since I've left the country. And I realized that I don't really miss it, which is really makes me feel like such an old and boring dadsy just go to work have the family shit guy and i'm like it's kind of nice <laughs> i never thought i'd say this but it's nice uh it's young people don't understand and i'm sure like I, young people listening to this probably like, what the fuck are you talking about i'm never gonna be like that but you will and old people are like it was coming are you done you done right you done right are you done are you done okay okay the manic and incoherent twists and jerks and leaps and hops of the dancers were clearly fueled by something other than a bit of fungus, which was actually more likely to cause debilitating pain if you consumed too much of it. Another theory is that the participants were actually some sort of man maniac religious cult who knew exactly what they were doing and were in full control of their senses. Then I don't think they're going to do it until they fucking die, are they? I mean, although people do all sorts of weird shit for religion. <laughs> all sorts i must kill myself in the name of the lord holy sh be in awe as you are in the presence of the almighty as public displays of religious ritual were banned at the time they were disguising their worship under a veil of a dance plague but this overlooks the fact that Bellbler's victims were clearly not having a good time on the dance floor yeah but also look people having a good time in, in church i've been to church i look around people look f bored they're not like i mean I feel like American churches where people get all passionate and shit, they're having a good time. But British churches, like a bunch of people who look like this. And then they're singing hymns like this. If you're listening to this, because I know people just listen to this show sometimes, I'm doing like a super sour face. And it's just boring and no one cares. Maybe there's like mad evangelical churches in the UK where they're like, go out and praise Jesus to the masses. 
Oh, may his name be known from sea to shining sea. That's an American thing, isn't it? But it can also apply in the UK. From channel to shining sea. Wait, ocean, ocean. From channel to shining ocean. And the Atlantic Ocean isn't very shiny in the UK. It's always gray. It's usually raining and there's clouds. You're not like, oh, beautiful. You're like, people swim in there? Shit. Whoa! That's interesting, but I sure don't care. They were consumed by uncontrollable spasms. They were often grunting wildly like distressed animals. They were breaking their own ribs with their overly aggressive dance moves. Oh my good lord. And many of them were foaming at the mouth. Actually, now that I've typed it out loud, maybe it's not a million miles away from a typical scene at an acid house rave in Coventry. Never been to Coventry. Never been to an acid house rave. Never done acid! Oh, my childhood was wasted. <laughs> but it seems doubtful that these victims were faking it on any level. No, the most credible answer by far is that St. Vitus really did have a powerful grip on these people, or at least, you know, they thought he did. The citizens of Strasbourg genuinely believed that they had been cursed by God following lousy harvests, outbreaks of syphilis, leprosy, and the plague. Oh, f the vast man. All of this sh at the same time. If we had just one of these going on right now, we'd be like, fuck, man. Leprosy? Although leprosy does still exist. So does syphilis. So does the plague. But we control that sh for the most part, don't we? I don't want to say that because I feel like there's definitely places where people don't have that much money. And they're like, they still... I remember... Like when I was a kid, we'd have geography lessons and it'd be like... We'd watch a video, which was always great. And then you'd be like, oh, what's this video about? Oh, it's about this woman who's got f***ing leprosy. And her hands would be all ruined from touching hot things because she can't feel. I still remember that today. Have we fixed that already? Please tell me we've fixed that. Please tell me that we've sent enough money to places where leprosy happens. That f leprosy, man. How can we still be having that today? I'd do something about that if I knew anything about it or was generous. And these God-fearing people were brought up in an environment of belief in which they genuinely thought that St. Vitus had the power to curse them to death by dance. Sounds like a bad movie from the same people who make The Fast and the Furious. This led to a cultural contagion built on a powerful social influence or, or alternatively, by the guy who made... Was I talking about in the last video? How that, that movie, Moonfall? Holy shit, is that bad. Oh, if that hasn't come out yet... If that video comes out after this one, you guys, I, I swear the episode becomes about how bad the uh, the movie Moonfall is. But you're just ruining it. You're ru Look at my lips. You're ruining it. Ruining. The people were far more likely to enter a state of possessed trance if they spotted others falling into the exact same trap that they expected to follow. It's a bit like giving a young kid a glass of shandy and telling him that he's going to get absolutely blind drunk. That kid is going to believe that he is blind drunk. Or sticking to a more closely religious theme driven by theory, it's a bit like the European nuns from the 15th century who were led to believe that they'd been possessed by the devil and later started clawing their way up trees, meowing like a cat, shitting in litter trays and making obscene propositions. Oh my god, I remember. I've made a video about this as well. And what was it? There was the one and she's like, you've got to call me like... Oh, fuck, what was it? It was so good and I had such a laugh in the original video about this. Fuck! I'm trying to remember it. A few moments later... It was like... She would shout at one of the nuns would like shout at the priest. You will be great face, It's like, oh my god, what are you up to, nuns? It was worse than that, though. It was even better. <laughs> They were conforming to behavior patterns that they had been told would overpower them. And it was a similar kind of mass hysteria or stress-induced psychosis which had been ripping through Europe like a collective madness and compelling the particularly superstitious and religious and fearful folks to put on their dancing trousers and fall into a trance from which there might be no escape. One of the main reasons why the 1518 Strasbourg incident may have been the last of its kind is because of those kind of religious belief systems began to fade in later years as the typical townsfolk cottoned on to the idea that the idea of being cursed by the ancient saint, the patron saint of epileptics, 
is, well, a little bit of a nutty notion. You could also describe it as an absolute crock of sh as education and living conditions and common bloody sense improved, people were far less likely to fall under the hypnotic spell of the silent drumbeat. But even though the dancing plagues may have taken their final waltz over 500 years ago, that doesn't mean that we've necessarily seen the end of unusual epidemics. In 1983... In 1983, almost... We can't even speak. Yes, I can! In 1983, almost a thousand teenage Palestinian girls near the West Bank succumbed to collective bouts of fainting, nausea, and blurred vision within the space of a month for apparently no good reason at all. Maybe they just all had the same idea to try and get out of P.E. It was suspected for a while by Palestinian leaders that this was the result of chemical warfare from Israel settlers, but no organic cause was ever discovered. It's good that the Israelis are using a organic... Uh, organic chemical warfare, though. That's nice. Most medical... FBI, open up! Most medical experts now agree that it was most likely a case of mass hysteria with a purely psychological cause. As the very idea of the, plague, of the plague swept through the school, so did the symptoms. As recently as 2011, another case popped up in a high school in New York when 18 teenagers suddenly began developing uncontrolling twitching and spasms and verbal tics, not entirely unlike the symptoms of Tourette's syndrome. Concerned parents felt like it might have something to do with a nearby fracking site or a chemical spill which had occurred in the area over 40 years years earlier. But any environmental factors were completely ruled out following a comprehensive investigation by health authorities. Dr. Laszlo Mechler from the Dent Neurological Institute later concluded that it was most likely to be a case of mass psychotic illness. Sorry, psychogenic illness possibly sparked by one teenage girl who was diagnosed with genuine Tourette's syndrome and who appeared to inspire copycat phantom symptoms in her classmates, which began to spread through the whole school. How disappointed is that girl going to be when it's like, oh my god, thank god it's only the psychosomatic nonsense and I don't have Tourette's. And then it'd be like, no, no, no. Uh, you, you, sadly, you are the one person who does actually have Tourette's. You'd be like, fuck! <laughs> Sorry, that's it. Not appropriate. <laughs> Oh, uh, is that okay? No. I don't know. If I can get away with that in 2022, you're probably going to come back to bite me. It's a joke. Relax. This was despite the fact that, and I know that Tourette's isn't just people screaming f by the way. They, they... Ooh, no! Nice. This was despite the fact that nobody else was ever diagnosed with Tourette's and all the others went on to make a full recovery. Quick thought. Do they have some dedicated classes for Karids kids with Tourette's syndrome? Can you imagine turning up to teach you one of those? Christ, Danny. <laughs> Sounds like you don't understand what Tourette's syndrome is. <laughs> Calling Danny out. So, although the dancing cancelled Danny... So, although dancing plagues have been consigned to a deeply unusual episode from history, the likely root cause hasn't entirely disappeared. The symptoms of an illness can still be shaped by psychological distress, fear, religious and supernatural beliefs, and the mind-boggling weight of sheer expectation. Perhaps inviters could still drag you onto the dance floor if you was in the right mood, or to be more accurate, if you were in the wrong mood. And next time you think you're a proper party animal because you've stayed out so late that even the kebab house has taken last orders, just remember the dancers who bopped until they dropped in a mosh pit of medieval madness. This has been an episode of Brain Blaze. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, you have to smash that like button below. It is not an option. And uh, if you didn't, use the dislike button. That's also totally fine. Oh, this t-shirt. I just saw this on my little monitor. And uh, it's uh, someone sent this to me. It's not a merch item. Someone just wanted to send me a t-shirt with the design that they had. And I was like, that's cool. And I lost your email. I'm so sorry. So whoever made this for me, it arrived. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe drop me another email and I'll keep an eye on my spam or something. Because I couldn't thank you for it. So thank you. And uh, bye for now. Not just the person who made this. Everyone watching in case that wasn't clear. Bye. Hi, I'm Renata Bliss and I'm your freestyle dance teacher.